Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to take you on a quick boat tour of my Ranger boat right here before we go fishing. I've had this boat for five years now. I did this video on my channel a while ago back when I did YouTube a little bit and then kind of took a break which I shouldn't have done. Anyway, had this boat for five years. I have some experience with it now so I can tell you everything I like and dislike about it because I do have a couple dislikes and I want to point them out to you in case you're looking at this boat or any other accessories on my boat. And if you're new to my channel, go ahead down below and hit the subscribe button for me. I'm trying to reach that thousand subscriber mark, so if you could help me out with that, that would be greatly appreciated. And if I don't cover anything in this tour that you'd like to know something more about, leave it in the comments below and I'll answer all of them at the end of this video. Okay, so first thing, this is a Ranger Z518C. We'll take a quick walk around the outside, show you some things from the outside, and then we'll jump in and show you all the storage. Um, we have the parking brake right here. Um, that is a super helpful feature, but I don't use it as much as you think. Um, I really only use that when we're at hotels and stuff like that. And I needed to unhook the boat to go to dinner, but I don't have wheel chocks with me. Uh, in my driveway, I chalk the wheels anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, this trailer is awesome. Um, they have the road armor on it, which helps a lot. It doesn't chip. I like the fiberglass steps and everything to be able to get up into it. And then they always have the oil bath hubs on the Ranger. And I got the wheel upgrade here with the blacked out rims, which looks awesome on this boat. Um, but the oil bath hubs makes it super helpful. You don't have to keep greasing your bearings and everything like that. You can just tow it, go fishing, and not worry about something bad happening unless you smell or see some heat or something like that. So those are super helpful. Getting to the business end of the boat here. Um, this is where we have most of the stuff that's actually on the external that I need to mention here for you. Swim ladder, pretty standard on the boat. So right here, the C model, the reason it's the C versus the 518 regular, this boat can handle up to a 200 horsepower. It's the same hull as the 518, but it can handle up to the 200 horsepower. So we have the 200 horsepower Pro XS. Um, this was before the four stroke came out. And the only thing that I dislike about this motor is how much oil it goes through. Other than that, um, it's super awesome. It's fast motor, runs great. I've only ever had one problem with it and it was the injectors going bad, which is a common problem with all the Mercury Pro XS's. It usually happens within the first 100 hours and it's usually under warranty anyway, so it's no big deal. Um, after you replace them, apparently there's never any more problems. That's what the mechanic said whenever I got them fixed. So my injectors are fixed have not had another problem with my motor since. Um, we have two power pole blades, eight footers, and I have the motor mounted on an Atlas jack plate right here. The jack plate is awesome for getting into shallow water, and then the power poles are even better for fishing in shallow water. Helps with bed fishing, docking your boat, pretty much everything you can do in less than eight foot of water. I use those constantly. Um, the Ranger boat buckles are awesome. Most boats have these now anyway, but it's super easy to just ratchet your boat down at the end of the day. And then another key feature of the Ranger boat is the drain plug switch, which is right here. You can turn it in and out. The only thing I've ever had go wrong with this is I had the cable break one time because there was something stuck in the drain plug or it was kind of frozen. Um, as long as you don't force it, it'll go in just fine. And then you don't have to worry about the cable breaking. Um, but if it does break, you can manually put it in and out and not have to worry about that. So that is everything from the outside. Now let's jump up inside the boat and take a look at everything on the inside so we can show you that. Okay, so we're up inside the boat now. We're gonna start at the front. We'll work our way back to the back again. Um, first thing is I have the Minn Kota Fortrex here. This is the one that's came standard on the boat. This is not upgraded to the Ultrex yet. I probably will upgrade it next year if I keep this boat or if I get a new one, I'll get an Ultrex on that boat. Um, the Ultrex is awesome, but the Fortrex is great for being able to rip through grass and stuff like that. They can take an abuse. That trolling motor is five years old. Letters are missing on it, but it still runs great. The only complaint I have about the Fortrex, which isn't something about the boat itself, is that you can't spot lock with it. So it's a pain when you're fishing places with current or wind and you have to constantly stay on the trolling motor to keep going. Um, up front here, I have a Lowrance Elite 9 Ti mounted over my foot pedal right here. I just use that for graph and sonar. Um, I don't have 360 or live sight yet. I just use this one graph up front here. That's all I really have. Um, I, it works fine for me for now. I'll probably upgrade graphs later. The Elite series, I have three of them. We'll show you the other two at the console here in a second. They're awesome graphs. They're very affordable. That graph is $1,000 without the transducer, and it's a 9-inch graph. Um, it does everything a Lowrance HDS will do, except for a few features that I don't use regularly anyway, so I do not even worry about it. Um, I just roll with the Elite, 
and it's about half the price and it's a great graph. Uh, it'll do everything you need it to do. The new ones are the Elite FS and it's going to be the same as these, kind of similar to, more similar to the HDS though. More a budget friendly graph for the weekend angler. That is awesome. Um, I've loved running those. And we also have the power pull foot switches up front here so I can control those from the front. Moving back, we'll get into some of the storage we have in the boat here. So the first feature we have right here is the rod locker on the boat. Uh, this is awesome. Has the little bungee, hoard, bungee cord holders in here. Holds, I think I have 15 rods in here right now. So that's about as much as you can fit in. If you took this out, you can put more in. I've done it. You can put up to like 25 rods in here without this. But they'll bounce around and you'll end up damaging your rods and reels. So I do not advise that. But you can if you want to fit more rods in there. It's carpeted to protect all your rods. Um, I'm not a big fan of the carpet because it absorbs water and then it holds moisture for all your tackle to get rusty. So I would prefer like they have in this compartment, which is my center console, which I think they switched this up on the newer Rangers now. They have this gel coat bottom here. This drains out much easier and you don't get as much rust on your tackle. It just protects it more over time. Uh, this is where I keep most of my tackle. It's not wide enough to fit a 370 box long ways like this, so I have to put them this way, but that's fine. I can fit two rows of those, and then I can fit soft plastics all the way up in the front here, put my net on top. This is pretty maxed out, but I probably could put some more stuff in there if I needed to, um, but that's about as much tackle as I like to carry with me for a day right there. Moving over here, we have the cooler. And inside the cooler, we have some snacks for the day. Uh, we're getting ready to go fishing. Uh, but this is a very big cooler. You can fit a lot of stuff in here. You can fit a lot of ice in here as well. So I'll put all my ice for a day of fishing, put it in here. I can put ice in with my live wells whenever the fish need it. And it'll keep all my drinks cold for a day. This is the only cooler in the boat, but it's plenty of space for me and a co-angler and a BFL or something like that. In here, we have another storage box. This one here, I greatly dislike, to be honest. Um, for this reason right here. I don't know if you can see that, but that's mold. Um, again, carpeted storage, do not like it. I don't keep much in here because of what happens in here. Um, there is no drain in this compartment at all. So if you get any water in here, it stays in it until you open this compartment, air it out, and drain it out. So I even, I gotta go clean that because that, that um, wasn't there a few days ago. So that, that happens pretty quickly. Um, and you have to clean it often. So that's one thing I do not like about this boat, but I can put some stuff in here. So I have like my spinner baits, which are also in a second bag. So nothing's gonna happen to that. I have a waterproof toolbox. Nothing's gonna happen to that. My lure retriever, nothing's gonna happen to that. Sometimes I'll put clothes in there for a day if it's dry, like extra clothes or stuff I take off when I'm layering in the winter and don't need to put it back on. But I don't use that one for much just because there's no drain in there. So then I have a single console, so we have the open seat here, center console there, we'll go through that in a second. Driver's seat, let's jump down in here and we'll show you what's at the console and what I like and dislike about that. Okay, so we're at the driver's console here. I run two Lowrance Elites on a Bass Bow Technology mount here. The Bass Bow Technologies mount is the best mount if you're going to run two graphs at your console. I tried the KVD Kong one and I wasn't a fan. The 12 was actually too heavy to fit on the single um, prong that you're putting it on. So anytime you would hit a wave, it would shake and it would shear these um, U brackets off and I would break my grafts off. I broke it off three times before I replaced this mount and I haven't had a problem with it breaking since. Um, I run a 12, I'll run side scan and down scan on here and then I'll run my map and GPS on this nine over here and then we have the steering wheel with the dual tilt trim and uh, switches for the jack plate and for trim. And then keys go down here, phone charger. So right here we have the control for the live well. Um, it goes auto, empty, and recirculate. So you can drain it out, you can turn it to recirculate, you can turn it to auto to fill it up. Um, that's actually very nice. I like this feature here. Um, this is a very easy way to control the live wells. What I don't like, is these buttons right here. I don't like these buttons right here for one main reason. They are on a spring. So if I push this button in and it's cold outside or it's rusty because I haven't used it in a while and there's some moisture on the spring and that spring sticks, you have to get a screwdriver and pull it out to get it to release itself. Or you can push it and think it has clicked down and then when you let it go, 
it comes off. So if you do that with your live wells, you could forget about it and your live wells aren't pumping all day and then all your fish die. So I don't like these. I would prefer actual buttons that you can actually push and you know they're on and you know they're working. Um, but I make do with these for now. That's one feature about this boat that they also had fixed on the new one. Um, I did not like these spring buttons, but the newer 518s, they have fixed this. We also have our hot foot down there. Uh, that's a must for running in rough water um, or just driving a bass boat in general. I don't know how I ever drove one without it. I'll never go back. That is an awesome feature to have for 200 bucks. Definitely get one of those no matter what bass boat you have. And then we also have our power pull switch right here at the dash. So if I'm driving the boat, pull up to a dock, I can just hit down and anchor my boat right there at the dock. Now we'll get into the center console here. Um, this is pretty basic. I don't keep much in here. That's our number from yesterday in the tournament that we fished. Uh, only caught one fish. Wasn't a very good day. I basically just keep my call system for when I'm calling, my scale. I'll keep some fin clips, stuff like that. My sunglasses, some gloves for this time of year. My phone wallet keys will go in here. Um, that's about all I keep in here. Just stuff I want to keep dry but keep easily accessible. And then we have the live well right here. This is an awesome live well, a little small for me. I need to clean it out from yesterday. Um, but it's only 24 gallons, which kind of sucks, especially when you're fishing. Like I fish the Northeast BFLs. So if we fish on St. Lawrence River and me and my co-angler can both have five fish, we both have 25 pounds of smallmouth on each side, which is easily possible on the St. Lawrence. I mean, there's 50 pounds of fish in there and there's only 25 gallons of water. So um, that's kind of a bummer there. Uh, we do have the lights down in there. There's lights in all these compartments except for the cooler and the battery box. You can see in all the compartments if you need to turn that on during the day. But I wish these live wells were a little bit bigger and divided so that I can have my own fish and not worry about my co-angler messing with them. And he can have his own fish and not worry about me messing with his fish. Um, but it does have a divider in the middle down there right there it's just it all runs off of one pump if you have a divider a divided live well you have one pump for each and you have more water in each so it, like a 40 gallon live well would be 20 on each side and they each have their own pump this is 24 with one pump so that's a little that's a little thing to take a look at depending on how much tournament fishing you do and stuff like that that's one thing to look at with the live well this box right here same gel coat coating with a rubber mat on the bottom this is awesome um, it has a ledge up top to store some extra stuff. So I just leave this open for whoever I fish with to put their stuff in. Coming over here, we have my other storage compartment. This is where I keep some heavier stuff or some cold weather stuff. I have some extra clothes. Uh, probably should have warmed those up because I'm going to need to wear those today. Um, I keep rope and some G juice and stuff like that up on the ledge, my registration papers. And then I'll put down in here like some plastics. This is a spool of line, spools of line, stuff like that. Just some miscellaneous stuff that I don't need to get to as often. And the last compartment is the battery box. Nothing too excited in here, um, except the Ranger jump start switch is awesome. So if your trolling motor battery, if your cranking battery dies, you can turn it to jump start and jump start off your trolling motor batteries to make sure you can get back to the ramp. Other than that, that's the oil reservoir. Um, this is the AGM cranking battery I have for all of my graphs, power pull, or graphs, anything that's not a trolling motor runs off of this battery. So graphs, live wells, lights, motor, all of that runs off of my cranking battery. We have the Minn Kota Precision Charger 3 bank right there, our two power pull pumps, and then we have two AGM batteries for my 80, full, 80 pound thrust 24 volt Minn Kota Fortrex up on the front deck. I hope you guys enjoyed that quick little tour of my Ranger boat. Um, hopefully, we're going to get a new one next year. Maybe a Ranger, maybe a different brand. I'm not sure yet, but I think we're going to try an upgrade next year depending on how YouTube goes, how the tournament season goes. So if you could hit that subscribe button and help me support, help support me to get towards that goal at the end of the year, that would be awesome. And if I missed any questions that you might have about this boat, leave it in the comments down below, and I'll be sure to answer all your questions about the boat. And thank you for watching.